When you're building an AI assistant, memory is an incredibly important concept. So when you're working with ChatGPT, you'll notice that it remembers the entire conversation, so it adds context and you can reference back to it. In VoiceFlow, we handle memory automatically. So within the AI step, you'll notice that there is the option here to use a prompt, use memory, and use memory plus prompt. When you're having a conversation, VoiceFlow is automatically saving the last three turns of the conversation. So that's user said assistant said three times. It's just saving the transcript of it. And so when you choose to have a prompt plus memory, it's automatically including those last three uh, transcripts. On the knowledge base, you'll see that it isn't used. That's because it's automatically using the transcript when it's actually answering questions. And so to be able, let's say you wanna be able to go and customize this a bit more. So sometimes if you're building a more advanced bot, you're gonna to wanna to be able to have more control over what that memory looks like. To do that, you can create a memory variable. So here's an example of what I've done where I've used a set step here to create a memory variable that just says, take the memory and then apply what a user just said to it. This lets me create a longer memory than just three turns. It also allows me to take it and manipulate it uh, if I want. So let's go ahead and give an example here. Great. So the first thing we're gonna say is, what color is the sky? And the answer is going to be blue. Then we're gonna ask, what color is the grass? And the answer is going to be green. Let's just go ahead and turn the debug mode here. Then we're going to go ahead and ask, um, what was the first question I asked? You'll see it's able to actually reference the transcript. And so in this example, I just got the memory actually showing up so you can see what's going on. But you can see here in the first message, it recorded um, you know, the, the message that I sent and then what the response was in the timestamp. You can see the second one here that it actually then appended it towards the end. And you can see then the third one here, uh, it was able to actually reference the transcript, answer the question, and then also append this question to the transcript. So um, this lets you create your own memory inside of VoiceFlow, so you can do a lot with that. And let's actually show you how to do this. So what I've done here is I go ahead and go to the logic set, and this lets us actually set a variable. So I'll say create new memory. And what we're gonna do is we are going to make sure that we apply to a variable. So let's apply it to the memory variable. And the set step allows us to enter a value, a variable, or an expression. So for this, we're gonna use an expression for the memory step. So we're gonna say the me for the memory variable, we want you to override what's in there and add the following. We're gonna say memory. So we wanna include what we already have. Then we're gonna go plus, and then let's add a string. So we're gonna say user. Then we're gonna go plus, and then we're actually gonna put in like last utterance. So now it's gonna have memory, and then it's gonna have user colon and it's gonna have whatever the last utterance was, what the user just said. Let's do plus again. We're gonna go ahead and do, whoops, uh, assistant plus again, and this time we're gonna add last response. So last utterance is automatically saved whenever a user says something, so it's the last thing they said, and last response is the last thing that the assistant said. So uh, I know in the example we use a timestamp as well, um, so that might be helpful, so we can just do timestamp, and then go plus, and then timestamp. This is just a variable that's automatically saved with a timestamp, Whenever, a, whenever you use it. So there you go. And now you've got a memory variable inside of VoiceFlow. Now to reuse this throughout your project, the thing I would recommend is actually just going shift highlight and creating a component. A component is a uh, reusable uh, folder inside of VoiceFlow. So we'll just call it memory. And you can see I already created one here, but let's just remove the other one. And so what this allows you to do is it actually allows you to just drag this out and add it to anywhere you want, like just like a step. And so what happens is when it does this, uh, it basically hits the component, it goes inside of it, and then it comes back out like a subfolder. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go in here, just make sure this is all connected up. Um, but now it'll work in the exact same way as when I had the set step, but it's a little bit easier because now I can drag it out uh, anywhere through my project. And if I ever need to make changes, I can just go in here and edit it once, and it'll appear everywhere that I actually used the component. So that's how you add custom memory to your project. You might wanna tweak the prompt a bit depending on how you're using it. You might need to be more expressive or less expressive telling it to use the memory or not, um, but that's how you would get a little bit more advanced and start to use your own memory inside of VoiceFlow.